To use an over-the-counter pain reliever like Tylenol or Motrin. And like all drugs, they come with benefits and risks. So picking the right medication for you is key. And the Fox Medical Team's Beth Galvin joins us now with what we need to know. Beth, and good, good morning. morning, Elise. And you know you have so many choices when it comes to an over-the-counter painkiller at the drugstore. And there are a few things that you really do need to know about these type of pain medications. So we asked Dr. Sharon Burquist of Emory Healthcare to sort of break down the basics for us about what these medications can do what side effects they can cause, and how you can find the right one for you. What is the best over-the-counter medication to stop your pain? Emory internist Dr. Sharon Berquest says that depends on why you're hurting. And she says you've got two main choices at the drugstore. One type is acetaminophen or Tylenol. And then the other type is the family that we call NSAIDs or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Think ibuprofen, Motrin, aspirin, or naproxen, all NSAIDs. One of the main differences is that the NSAID family are anti-inflammatory. So they're not just pain relievers, they reduce inflammation. Tylenol has no anti-inflammatory property, so it is purely a pain reliever. So for a headache or a fever, acetaminophen or Tylenol may be your best bet. If you sprain your ankle, if you stub your toe, inflammatory type um, injuries, you're better off taking an anti-inflammatory pain reliever. But what about side effects? Dr. Burquist says there can be plenty. I think a lot of people underestimate the potential side effects and risks of over-the-counter pain medication. You want to read the label, take only the recommended dose, and Dr. Burquist says keep in mind that most side effects come with regular use. But if you just use them sporadically, um, they're less of an issue. Some common side effects of acetaminophen include nausea and stomach pain, and ibuprofen Ibuprofen can cause stomach irritation. If you have a sensitive stomach, um, always take it with food. That's really critical. Um, they're also blood thinners, so they can increase your risk of bleeding. And in higher doses, ibuprofen can cause kidney problems, and acetaminophen has been linked to liver damage. Acetaminophen goes through your liver, um, so if you have underlying liver disease, um, you should steer clear of acetaminophen. And if you drink excess alcohol, which is also broken down by the liver, you probably should steer clear of acetaminophen. And if you take one of these over-the-counter pain medications regularly, Dr. Burquist says you want to talk to your doctor about it at your next visit because some of these issues like the kidney problems and the liver problems can only be detected by blood work. So your doctor then would know what to look for. And Elise, you know, one thing I didn't mention, but the ibuprofen uh, type family mm -hmm. can raise your blood pressure mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't realize that too. So that's another reason why you would want to mention that to your doctor. Sure. What about dosage, Beth? Making sure you're not taking too much here. That's really critical, especially when when we talk about Tylenol, you know, and liver toxicity. So I would definitely say read the box, go by what the directions say, and try not to get above that daily recommended amount because that, you know, really can start to get you into a dangerous situation if you're taking too much over a long period of time. Okay, and, but what about those people, too, that, that can't tolerate any of these medications? What can they do for pain? Well, uh, Dr. Burkus really suggests kind of thinking outside the box and thinking about, like, you know, not necessarily medication, but maybe icing mm -hmm. or using a heating pad because icing can help with inflammation to reduce inflammation. Uh, Heating can help, you know, get the blood flow going and, and, and help you heal. So maybe not always thinking about the medication, trying some other things first. And it's important to say also, I didn't, I wanted to leave out, you know, you have to be really careful with children giving them aspirin. You do not want to give children aspirin because mm -hmm. of Ray's syndrome, um, which can be a, a very serious syndrome for them. Okay, some good reminders for us today, Beth. Thank, Thank you very you. much for that.